when you're in denial that the holidays are over and it's March. All right, so today it is day three of 15 days of foundation. This is where I try out a new foundation every single day for 15 days. Today we're gonna to be talking about a brand new foundation from Cover Effects. This is the Power Play Foundation. You get 1.18 fluid ounces in here, which is a little bit more than the standard one fluid ounce, and it retails for $44. The super exciting thing about this foundation is that it comes in 40 shades. I love the Cover Effect shade range in most of their products. Not only do they have a good shade selection, but they typically have really good undertones. They have P, N, and G, which is golden, pink, neutral, golden. In the Cover Effects drops, I have the shade N10, which if I use them just on their own, it's a little bit light for my skin now. They used to match me about a year and a half ago. Now that my skin has somehow changed a little bit, I feel like I've gotten darker about a half a shade to a shade. So I just use them to mix. I love those drops, one of my favorite products. But I got the shade P20 in this one. I was debating between P20 and N20, but the swatches on their site looked pretty similar in those two. So I don't know. I just went with P20 and I figured I could mix it if I need a little bit more pink in a foundation. So it says this has buildable medium to full coverage with a modern matte finish. It's supposed to control shine and visibly blur imperfections and stay all day without drying or dulling the complexion. It's sweat proof, waterproof, transfer proof. It says it's vegan, cruelty free, and I'm just now seeing on here that the skin types they recommend for this are a combination to oily skin. So right now I have normal to dry skin from Accutane. I'm on month five. Before Accutane, I was combo oily, and after Accutane, I'll probably be back to combo oily, which is what I've been reading is that your skin kind of goes back to oily when you're off it. So we'll see, but right now I'm definitely more on the normal to dry side. So I'm gonna start swatches right here so you can see what the shade P20 looks like compared to some of my other foundations. All right, so swatches. The third over is actually the Power Play foundation. I was just doing some other swatches. So right here is the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops in the shade N10. Next over is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable in the lightest shade 10. Again, the Cover Effects Power Play in P20. NARS Radiant Foundation in Mont Blanc, CYO Life Proof in 101. Dermacol 208 in Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. If you're excited for this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Check out the contest page down below. You can vote one time per day for the city that you want to be a meetup in and for a winning shelter that's gonna win $5,000. There's a link to t-shirts on there. 100% of the proceeds go to Project Beauty Share. I'm so excited to start seeing you guys in the t-shirts. I'm filming this on March 1st, so I haven't actually posted the announcement video. I post it tonight. All right, here we go. If you wanna see my thoughts on the Cover FX Power Play Foundation, you're in the right place, just keep watching. I just have this hair sitting on my table right now. <laughs> These are clip-on bangs that I got off of Wish. Would not recommend. Okay, it's 8.07 in the morning, March 1st. It's actually been about, I think about a week since I filmed, so I feel a little out of it right now. I actually got really sick, and now I have some kind of weird throat thing that I'm on antibiotics for, but had to start filming. <laughs> so this shade P20 looks promising. It might actually be a little bit light. We'll see. Looking against my neck, my face is a lot darker and more red than my body. So here's what the packaging looks like. It is just a squeeze kind of tube right here. I don't mind a squeeze tube. I actually kind of like it because it's super easy. I'm gonna shake this because it seems pretty liquidy. I've already washed, moisturized, prepped my skin. The products I've been using will be linked down below in the description box. Half my face, I'm gonna use my LA Girl sponge, which is dampened. The other half, my Sigma F80. I'm gonna go in. Oh, I think this is gonna be too light. So it's supposed to be medium to full coverage. I think the shade will be fine once I warm up my face and everything. Mm, I don't know, I feel like one shade darker would almost be too dark. Maybe I should have gone for the neutral because this one's looking a tiny bit pink. It is the P undertone. Ooh, that looks nice on the forehead. It looks pretty matte, but it looks very smooth. It's already majorly creasing right here. Holy shitsies. So the sponge is looking like medium coverage. It feels like a lot more matte or something on this side. Like it has this grip to it. It's not hard to blend out. It's just drying super, super quick. I'll definitely need that sponge to smooth out around my nose. I am getting better coverage with the brush. It's not looking great, but it's not looking bad. 
prefer the sponge on my forehead. I'm gonna smooth that out. I feel like this one is very matte and it dries super quickly. So I do like how you have a little bit more time to work with it with a sponge. My forehead looks great everywhere else. I'm not loving how it looks. I have a few dry patches right now around my mouth right here and then also some under my nose just from blowing my nose 5,000 times. This side I got much lighter coverage on this side, but you can still see a lot coming through. So I'm gonna try and do a thin kind of second layer just on the areas I need it. I'm not gonna do my forehead. I'm just gonna do right here and right here to see if we can build it up. And I'm gonna do it with a sponge because I definitely prefer the finish with the sponge. And like I said, it dries hella quick. So sponge with a little bit of moisture is definitely the way to go. That built, but I still wouldn't say it's full coverage. Now it just looks like solid medium coverage. It's like doing something weird on my dry patches around my mouth, nor this lip peeling, I know. But look at how freaking dry and crepey and just how much it's creasing right there. And then also on this side, the dryness, it is clinging right here. Forehead looks pretty nice and it's not clinging anywhere on my forehead. I do feel like I can really feel this on my face right now. I wouldn't say it feels really lightweight or anything. I don't know, I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and then I'll be right back. Okay, so right now it's 8.54. I'm gonna call the check-in time 8.30 because I just spent forever and a half on the rest of my makeup. There's a lot of fuzz on top of my lens right now. Looking at the foundation, so the one thing I like at this point is that it is kind of self-setting. I didn't have to use any kind of setting powder to blend out product on top of here, so I don't have any powder on my face right now. And this does say it's supposed to be oil controlling too. So if you do have oily skin, this might be one that might help control oil throughout the day. I'm hoping this doesn't make me super dry because of that. So I like that it was easy to blend product on top. I definitely don't feel like I need a powder. It doesn't feel super tacky or anything. It does feel like it's set down, so I do like that. As far as how it's looking, I am getting major friggin' creases. I mean, around my mouth, this is bad. Like, I rarely get this bad of creasing around this area. I usually get my creasing right in here. It looks very makeup-y. It looks great on my areas, like right here, where I don't have a lot of texture and stuff, but anywhere where I have texture, pores, where I usually get creasing, like all this whole area right here, is not looking great. My forehead looks pretty good. It is starting to crease a little bit up here. It looks pretty nice from far away. It's just when I get up close where I'm like, yikes. As of right now, I wouldn't put this on my face again alone. If I did use this again, the thing with mixing is I always try and mix two products that I like something in one that the other one might be missing, but I have to like both foundations. It's just they're better together, if that makes sense. So with this foundation, I think the only thing I would kind of use this for mixing is the pink tone. If I had a super yellow tone foundation that I wanted to kind of lighten and add a little pink, I could use this. But the coverage isn't really something I would mix it for, and the finish is definitely not something I would mix it for and it is very matte. So if I mix this with something, it would be something like the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude. That's really the only way I see myself using this is mixing it. So on the rest of my face for bronzer, I used the Bronzing Glow by Makeup Revolution. This looked a lot warmer today than the first time I used it. I don't know, it looked like very warm. I've been obsessed with this blush and it was limited edition, so I need to stop using it, but it's the MAC Baroness Extra Dimension Blush. I got this off of Glambot, and it's just such a pretty like glowy neutral color. For highlight, I tried out this new NARS highlight. This is the Capri highlight. It's like this light pink shade. This was beautiful. Ugh, the packaging, so nice. On my lips, I used one of my favorites, L'Oreal Infallible Tongue Tied. It's like one of my go-to colors. And I topped it off with the Maybelline Vivid Hot Lacquer in the shade tease. And then my eyeshadow, I actually tried the Bad Habit Aura palette. My cousin used this in the 10 year old does my makeup video, but I actually haven't tried it until today. This is supposed to be an Anastasia dupe. I did a whole video comparing a Hush subculture dupe against another dupe, and that was a total fail. But in the comments, a bunch of you guys said to try out this palette because this one is supposed to be really good. And so far, I like this. Out of the shades I used, this was really pretty. This is all of my eyeshadows today, except for the purple. I use this purple liner. This is the L'Oreal Infallible in Purple Violet. And then I just blended some bright purple shadow from the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. I'm gonna have to try this more, but definitely went much better than the other Hush palette. And I think that's everything. Oh, I'll give you guys a little update on this brow product since I mentioned it in the drugstore try-on haul video. I've been using this almost every single day. And the thing with this is that the applicator on this sucks. Like the applicator is horrible. You get 
way too much product out on this little wand thing. So what I've been doing is just taking my eyebrow brush and just going right in to either the tip or just even right here and then going in and just filling in my brows and it works amazing. It does last through water. It is very long lasting. I like how it just kind of like stays there, stays in place. So I've been really liking this. If you use it in a different way, like don't use the applicator. Just did like a mini review session. So I'm gonna show you guys what this thing looks like in natural lighting right now and then we're gonna do a little flash test. All right, so crazy fact, we actually have sun right now. So I'm standing in front of the window in natural lighting right now. So here's that weird creasing and clinging. Also, you can see it clinging to my dryness right here and already creasing over here. It seems to be almost actually rubbing off a little bit right here or something. I didn't see that before, but also a tiny bit on the center of my forehead. Hopefully that doesn't get worse throughout the day, but I've definitely seen my forehead look worse, especially with kind of matte oil controlling foundation. So it doesn't look horrible but here it is in natural lighting. So let's go do a little flash test. I always forget I need my phone for this. And got a photo of the wall. Ooh, looking ghostly. Why does flash make your teeth look so yellow? What's up with that flash? I don't see that this has SPF in it online. So check-in time is 8.30. I'll see you guys in a few hours in natural lighting. What time is it? 1.16, so it's been on for almost five hours. Got my hat back on right now. So it's looking pretty crappy. <laughs> Not loving how it looks. I look hella dry, like even drier than this morning and crustier than this morning. Oh, like that's dryness from, like I said, blowing my nose and stuff. So that's going to be there. But my lip lines right here have definitely gotten worse around here. This whole area looks really gross. Yeah, I definitely don't love how my forehead looks now. It looks super dry. Keep in mind, they do say this is more for combo oily skin and it is supposed to have oil controlling properties throughout the day. So I wasn't expecting it to really like keep my skin moisturized and stuff. So it easily could look much better on oily skin. This is just my skin. So we're testing it. <laughs> Don't really have a choice. That'd be pretty cool if you could like switch between skin types. Don't love it right now. We'll see how it wears at the end of the night. Well, I think we will be testing this waterproof claim <laughs> because I just posted the announcement video literally 20 minutes ago in my time today and I've just been getting a little emotion reading all of your comments. I love you guys and I so appreciate everyone who has already bought a t-shirt just in the first like 20 minutes that the video has been up and I'm just so excited to see what you guys can do throughout this 15 days. It's actually now, oh, there's my alarm for this. It's now 6.40, so it's been on for 10 hours. Wow, I am so dry over here now. It is like totally peeling off. Ooh, that is like crusty. It looks pretty much the same as the last check-in, but I actually feel like I'm even drier. You can see my skin like peeling in certain areas. That could be because of like the oil controlling thing and my skin is already dry. It is supposed to be transfer proof. So I'm wearing a white sweater, so I don't want to like hug myself, but I am going to use just the back of my hand and kind of press. Let's see if this is transfer proof. It feels like a powder. I don't really see anything on my hand. Let's look in the mirror. Let's try my nose, I can't really tell. See a tiny bit on my hand? No, it stayed on my nose pretty well. So I guess that's exciting if you're looking for like a transfer proof. Yeah, it's really not, it's not rubbing off. So that's exciting. If that's the only thing I like about this, with like the pink undertone, that could be enough incentive for me to mix this in with something. If I wanna make something last a little bit longer and be transfer proof, then I potentially might mix in like a drop of this, but this is so freaking matte and dry that I feel like on my skin right now, it's just not the best. But I think in about a month when I'm off Accutane and my skin is a little bit more normal oily again, probably, I would try this out again. So if you have very, very oily skin, you might wanna get a sample of this one if you can at Sephora and try it out because it does seem to be like very sucking all the moisture out of my skin, which I know is something I probably would have liked when I had oily skin. Mature skin, any kind of creasing texture, stay away from this one. Like I said, I'm getting creasing in places I normally don't at all. So that's how I feel about this one. Definitely, I think, made for oily skin and would not call this full coverage. I think this is about medium coverage. That's that. So don't forget the link to vote. One time a day is down below. Link to t-shirts is down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.